Does the gentleman from Virginia seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill, H.R. 5890. Clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 5890, a bill to require the Secretary of Health and Human Services to provide assistance to states in complying with and implementing certain provisions of Section 106 of the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act in order to promote better protections for young children and family-centered responses and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Garrett, the gentlewoman from Oregon, Mrs. Bonamici, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Virginia. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on H.R. 5890. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 5890, the Assisting States Implementation of Plans of Safe Care Act, and yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentlemen's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In 2016, a staggering 2.1 million Amer Americans experienced an opioid abuse disorder. To put that in perspective, the number of fatalities based on opioid abuse in the most recent year approaches the number 60,000. To put that in perspective, it's nearly sixfold the number of alcohol-related deaths on our highway. It's nearly twofold the number of automotive deaths on our highway. It is, in fact, greater than the number of deaths from automobiles plus non-suicide-related firearms deaths combined. What's more troubling is that this summer only takes into account those who directly suffered from substance abuse. What it does not take into account are the many people who experienced the secondhand trauma of a loved one struggling with opioid addiction. One of the greatest tragedies of the opioid epidemic is that thousands of children have been swept up by the current of the epidemic due to the substance abuse of a family member or other adult tasked with caring for them. The Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, CAPTA, recently amended in 2016 by the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, CARA, requires states to implement a plan of safe care to protect the health and safety of young children and to promote a family-centered approach to treatment and service delivery. Unfortunately, the requirements included by CARA fail to provide states with substantive guidance and information, which has led to significant confusion and poor implementation of plans of safe care. States and localities might benefit from written guidance and technical assistance provided by the Department of Health and Human Services as they strive to meet federal requirements and address the known challenges in their individual plans. Through an enhanced understanding of the requirements, states will be able to better protect the well-being of children and infants when working with families impacted by the trauma related to opioid abuse. It's clear the opioid epidemic is already multi-generational in nature, as children must confront the pain of an addicted parent or guardian. By strengthening states' responsiveness and plans of safe care, we can help give these children the protection they need while strengthening families for long-term success and stability. I urge my colleagues to support this legislation. Mr. Speaker, I would reserve the balance of my time. Chairman reserves his time. The gentlelady from Oregon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Without objection. 